Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser. In this video, I'll be showing how to use the constraint layout in Android in order to generate reasonably complex UIs. Uh, for example, we'll build the one shown here on the right. So, to start with, let's build a new project. So I'm going to say New Project. And I'm going to start here with a basic activity, which gives me a floating action bar if I wanted. And I'm going to call this one Constraint Demo. Constraint Demo. Okay, so let's resize for the window here and see what we've got. So, uh, Gradle is currently building me my project, and for this activity, it's going to give me a couple different files that I want to show here. Um, so, on the left, I've got two files. One is the for the main activity. I've got main activity or activity underscore main dot xml, and if I look at the uh, text of that, it's just going to be giving me the action bar at the top here, and at the bottom it gives me the floating action button, and then it includes the content main. So inside content main, this is the one where I actually want to put most of my activity. The things like the top and the bottom are defined inside of activity main. So we'll stick with this as a good starting point, and just to prove we're working, let's run this. So with any luck, it'll launch in this editor uh, emulator over here. Not yet. Let's go to, to there. We go, up and running. Okay, so let's start defining our UI. I'm going to start by getting rid of the things I don't want. So I'm going to delete this text box there. Um, let's do a couple little simple elements at the top. So to start with, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to distraction-free mode and get rid of the left. Zoom in a bit. So we want to put maybe a label in on the top left, and imagine we want to put a button in on the top right. And it looks pretty good. So now if I run my program, however, it's not going to look nearly as good. Because without any constraints, the Android activity Android does not know where to put things. And so everything ends up crushing into the top left. Because it turns out that the reason things are sitting over here is only during development. So I need to tell Android when it's running, so that it'll run on any size screen, where should I start putting these things? So let's start with this text view. There's buttons around it that I can basically click on. So I'm going to click on this and I can drag. And as I drag, we can see I can set what it is I wish to make my constraint to. So for example, just to start with, I'm going to put a constraint on here. And we can see that now the height of this is now below that. Maybe that's not what I want. I'm going to control click it. If I hold down control and click, it gets rid of that constraint. And I could maybe I could place it where I want to start with, but then I need to set these constraints. So I'm going to drag it to the top of my activity. And I'm going to drag the left one over to the left of my activity. Let's make this text much bigger so that we can actually see it. And so I'm going to go down here to text. Uh, where is it now? Here we go. Text size. And let's make it 30. And we'll say something like uh, good layout. All right. And let's do the same for the button. So I'm going to click on this. So I'm going to drag it up here. And let's make the button on the right hand side. So now I've set those two. You can tell what has been set based on the solid circles. They will show you what constraints are actually set for the item you're looking at. I'm going to run this. And let's go to distraction free mode there again. OK. And now it actually gets laid out where I wanted it to go. OK, that's a good start. Uh, next thing I want to show is maybe this is a little too tight to the edge. If you're looking at your phone, this feels like it's too tight to the left hand side, likewise for the button. So let's add some space in there. It turns out to be very easy to do with Android Studio. I'll click on the item I want to move around, and here are the constraints that we've got. We see that there's no constraints on the bottom or the right, and my constraints to the top and the left, I can go and I can set. So I'm going to want to add a margin on the top and a margin on the left of 8. I think this is uh, 8 uh, dp perhaps. And on the other side, I want to set this to 8 as well. And now when I run them, I'll get some space. I'll run that. While that's launching, I'm going to switch over here to view the text. Reasonably often, you're going to end up needing to go into looking at the XML in order to change things around. Maybe you wanted to copy and paste a bunch of elements, and in which case Android Studio gives them all the same names possibly and screws up the layout. So you need to kind of jump into the XML in order to make it work. So here we can see we've got a bit of layout. Let's check what that actually did over here in my XML. So I've got my text view. and what I might be really interested in here are these layout constraints. So we see here that for my app, 
as sort of layout constraint, the start to start of, and this goes to parent, and top to top of the parent. And they talk about start and end versus left and right because some activities are laid out uh, in some languages um, left to right versus right to left. So that's making it um, generic for that case. And likewise down here I've got the same sort of constraints set up. Um, the only thing I want to mention is you can tell that I'm in a constraint layout by up here. This defines the layout that I'm working in. So we can see it's a constraint layout. Now let's go back to the design view because that's where we want to do as much as possible, whenever possible. Let's add in a, a maybe a, another, I don't know, some text over here. and We'll center the text. So I'm going to drag in the text here. Let's give it some text. I'm going to say this one uh, centered. Of course, if I don't put anything on it, I need to, uh, it'll just display in the top left when I run my application. So I'm going to set the height first, and the height I want to be maybe just below my button. We'll give it some space there. So I'll give it a bunch of space. Let's go with uh, 24, move it down. And to center something, what I can do is I can provide it kind of conflicting constraints. I can say I want it on the right hand side and I want it on the left hand side. And we can see it's got like a spring here. The springs are fighting. I can actually adjust that with the slider and I can horizontally bias it across as to where I want it, how strong effectively I want the springs to be. Let's put it right in the middle as much as I can. 50%. And now it's going to be centered nicely for me. Again, I'll run that. And we can see it centers nicely. Let's add in a few other things. Let's add in a, a big element maybe that we want to move around. So I'm going to put in a recycler view. That's great for if you want to show a list of elements. And as I drop it in, it kind of expands to fill available space, which is good and bad. Now, if I just ran it again, again slammed to the top left, so let's make it go underneath my centered item here. I can't quite click on it, so I'm going to drag it out of the way. I'm going to say to here. And if I just double click these ones here, they'll go to the end of the app because that's where it's sitting. So now it's all around that. That's pretty good. But there's one problem that it's done. Android Studio has given this element, my recycler view, a width and a height that are hard-coded in DP, which are the display pixels. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hard-code it. I want it to match my constraints. Because I provided all of the constraints necessary for Android Studio to know where it should be laid out. If I run this, it's not going to show me anything because I don't have anything configured to go inside of my recycler view. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the um, what's in here. If I go back here, you can see this is actually a recycler view, but there's nothing in it. So let's change this to, I'm going to give it a, uh, a foreground. It's not going to really work nicely with an actual application, but it'll actually show it to us. I'll set it to the screen. Okay. I'll rerun that. We should see the whole thing. Looking good. Now if I go back to the sample that I started with, I said, well, maybe I want to do this down here. This is a little complicated. I want to move up my um, recycler view a little bit from the bottom, and I want to put in a couple text views and some edit text at the bottom. So let's start doing that. First thing I want to do is I want to break this bottom constraint, so I'm going to click on it, control click it. That'll break the constraint. Let's try that again, control click. And maybe not. Let's re move this up, control click that. There we go. I just resized it here. It's not going to have any real effect. If I go onto this, it's going to give me a height. Let's see where. Oh, it's actually flipped these back over to hard coded values. So I'm going to have to maybe flip this back to my constraints in a minute. But let's start by putting in some of these widgets that I need. Um, I want to put in a couple text views on the left, and then a couple edit texts on the right. So text here, do a plain text on the right, and let's do I don't know, an email here, why not? And let's start by getting rid of this floating action button. To get that, I need to go back into my uh, resources here, and under uh, layouts, main activity XML, because it's the actual outside one. I'm going to delete it. 
Floating action bar is go button is gone, and I also need to edit my Java code, otherwise it's going to try and access the floating action button, which no longer exists. So we'll get rid of those. Let's go back in here. So back to my content. That's better. Okay, so what do I want to do? Well, I want to start laying this out. I could provide these fixed sizes, but that gets a little questionable if I want to kind of lay things out in a column. Do I fix the width of these and how do I do that? I don't really like fixing the width of things. There's a neat thing I can do here with layouts. If we click on layouts, I can get a guideline. And this is not going to be actually a UI element, but it's going to be something here that I can work with that I can lay out parts of my UI to. I can specify how I want it, so I can drag it across the screen as to its width, and that's setting it in DP here. Um, I can go from the right hand side, or nicely if I click it a third time, I get the percentage. And let's say, okay, 35% sounds good. So now I can start to lay this out. I'm going to attach it to the value there, I'm going to attach it to the right, but we see here that it's wrap wrapping to the contents. I don't want to wrap to contents, lay out width. I want to wrap to the constraints. I want it to fit my UI constraints. So there's one, and I need to map it to the bottom here. We're going to give it an offset of 8, just to kind of bring it off the bottom of the screen. I'm going to bring this one to the right and the left. And because I want this one at the bottom, I'm going to map this one, my bottom to this top. That says, lay it out touching the previous one. I'm going to give it an offset of let's go 16, just to give ourselves some room and I need to set the constraint matched constraints for the width and that lays it out nicely. I might also want to give it some width bring it off these lines so let's put an 8 left 8 right on both of them 8 dp oops 8 dp left 8 dp right give us some room now if I want to get this text view, I want to have it lined up so I can drag the top of my text view to the top of this widget. When that draws, if I do it for both of them, it's not going to look very good because it's kind of right on the top. What I really want to do is kind of center it, I found looks pretty good. So if I click the, both the top and the bottom and set my constraints accordingly, it's going to split the difference. And so it gives me 50-50. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to set this constraint over to my line and then I want to have, let's give it a I don't know, 24, sure. Give me, self, give me some space. I'll repeat that with this one. So I want to give it to the line. Give me a 24 off the line, 24 dp. And lastly, connect to the bottom. And the final thing I want to do is I want to set this back onto here. And I noted before that this had automatically defaulted to some fixed sizes because I resized it. So let's go back to match constraints. And it will now fill available space. So let's see what happens when I run this. And there we have it. As I put my cursor in, we can see that it resizes this, all the content. This one's stuck to the bottom of the screen, and the content there resizes for me. Very nice. One tip I'll give you as well is do not nest constraint layouts. You can, and it will function. It just turns out to be much slower than you might expect. I did that in one design on some tabs, and then scrolling through the tabs was actually relatively slow. So if you need to do that, there are ways you can find online for having much more complicated layouts rather than actually nesting uh, complex layouts. With a constraint layout, you can pretty much get away with one constraint layout and putting everything inside of it. Previously, without constraint layout, you would have had to have laid out a bunch of linear layouts and so forth, and combining that in very complex ways. Okay, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click uh, like and or subscribe.